really, you get much too upset much too easily, Philip. We have a very simple excuse right here. What are you worrying about, Philip? After all, oh, Mr. Kentley's coming mainly to look at these books. Now, what could be better than to have them laid out neatly on the dining room table where the poor old man can easily get at them? Consider it, aren't we? Most consider... All mine's fine, thanks. Would you mind taking this into Janet? Sure. Why? Oh, no particular reason. It's hers. I thought you'd like to take it into her. She's in the bedroom telephoning. Then you'd like David to walk in. Oh, no, no. That'd be too much of a shock. When will you walk? July 14th. Can you really tell my future from that? Of course, I'm only an amateur astrologer. I'm sure you're very good. I do my best. I suppose you want to know if your concert will be a success. Yes, I do. Let me see now. You were born on the... 14th of July. Your cancer. Something gone wrong, Branagh? Uh, no, uh, Janet just has a talent for being bothersome at times. However, I suppose I'd better... Uh, what did you mean, something gone wrong? Well, you always plan your party so well, it's odd to have anything go wrong. She seems to be missing David. As a matter of fact, I'm beginning to miss him myself. Aren't we all? Two desserts, Mr. Cadell? One for you, one for me, my love. Oh, uh, Mr. C. Well, the others don't seem to be in the mood for ice cream. No, though they could all do with a little cooling off. Why, it's a peculiar party. Not that that surprises me. Why not? I could have predicted it this morning. Both of them must have got up out of the wrong side of the bed. They've been in a state all day. Oh, Mr. Brandon says he's always in a state when he gives a party. That is, if you're still driving up to the farm tonight. Oh, we're driving up all right. Oh, well, that's good. You don't look too well, either one of you. Oh, thanks. Of course, I could do with the rest myself, but I want both of you to come back in tip-top A1 shape. We will. Well, I'm off. Enjoy yourselves. Uh, don't forget to write. <laughs> and mind your P's and Q's. Mm -hmm. Who are you calling? In the garage. Hello, uh, this is Mr. Brandon Shaw. Would you send my car around, please? Uh, yes, uh, right away. Thank you. And in a way, I'm frightened, too. But I don't want to fence anymore. Oh, what are you going to do? I don't want to. But I'm going to look inside that chest. Are you crazy? I hope so. With all my heart, I hope I'm crazy. Uh, Rupert, this has nothing to do with you. It's got to. Don't. Uh, Rupert. Got to look inside that chest. All right. Go ahead and look. I hope you like what you see. Do you think you're going to explain that? Yes, to you I can, because you'll understand. Understand? Rupert, what? Rupert, remember the discussion we had before with Mr. Kentley? Yes. Remember we said the lives of inferior beings are, are unimportant? Remember we said, we've always said, you and I, that moral concepts of good and evil and, and right and wrong 